11 percent of women will have surgery for prolapse 30 percent will have recurrence hence proper surgical technique is very important hence this video after patient is painted and draped first step is to delineate the lower extent of the bladder on the cervix at that point you will have to make an incision many people use vasopressin to reduce the bleeding but I don't use anything because if you are in a correct pain bleeding will be less once you have given the incision the next step is to find out the correct vesico vaginal space and separate the bladder from vagina from the bladder so here with the scissors I am trying to find the correct space bladder is vagina is separated from the bladder you again using scissors if you're in the correct plane there's no bleeding once you are in the correct plane pick up the scissor and separate the vesico vaginal fascia rather than using gauze piece and doing it bluntly first place to push the bladder down is in the center because there you will find the correct plane bladder is very badly adherent at the top near the urethra and near the cervix so here again I'm trying to dissect the vesico vaginal fascia and separate the fascia from the vaginal wall the extent of the separation is still the lower edge of the pubic rami same thing is done on the opposite side pull up the bladder and cut the attachment of the bladder to the cervix it is pushed up and once you have pushed it up you will find the glistening peritoneum which is cut this is a second case you know where I am showing you sometimes you know in spite of all the precaution you may get into trouble but if you are vigilant you will be able to prevent the bladder injury so here again you know my stent is holding the bladder up and I am making a incision to cut the bladder from the bladder attachment from the vagina so after I had made the cut and I was pushing it up I realized why I am seeing fat fat belongs to bladder and how do you differentiate that you know you have left a layer of the bladder you are uh, you've got some layer of bladder so put a sound to ascertain this patient was on warfarin because of the atrial fibrillation which was stopped one week back before the surgery yet she had much more bleeding than a normal patient now if you see here you know my bladder sound is coming till the end that means I was in the little on the wrong plane and this saved the injury to the bladder now how to open the posterior peritoneum so make a cut posteriorly you are holding the cervix up on the posterior lip of the cervix this is the same case which was on the warfarin hence the bleeding is more use the scissors to cut the fascia after separating it you will start uh, seeing a peritoneum which is being reflected from the cervix to the vagina catch hold of it palpate it there is no other structure you have got and once you are sure that what you are holding is peritoneum make a bold cut and your posterior peritoneum will be open put a speculum over there now to take the first clamp your finger has to go behind in the uterosacral ligament so that you catch hold of the uterosacral ligament complete when you're cutting it leave enough st uh, stump on the clamp side so that it does not retract this is the uterosacral along with the some part of the cardinal ligament in it number one vicryl is being used you have to transfix the pedicle so that it does not slip first knot is always a double knot so that your stump is very tightly closed and don't use all granny knots you have to use one reverse knot so that you know your pedicle is secured and this is the granny knot catch hold of it to identify that this is the uterocycle I catch hold these ligaments with a straight clamp 
same thing is done on the opposite side it is very essential to separate the vagina completely so that at the end of it you know when you are transfixing the uh, sutures when you are doing the posterior caldoplasty your ligament is away from the vaginal wall in a non descent cervix you need not do this but in a patient who has a prolapse this has to be done separate the posterior vaginal wall nicely from the uterosacral and from the cervix there's a small bleeder we cauterize it now again my finger is gone back to hook the uterosacral ligament so that it comes in the clamp take a good heinous clamp and take your first clamp which includes uterosacral and cardinal ligament cut it so that enough tissue is left on the clamp side so that it does not slip again using number 1 micrel transfix the pedicle first knot is always a double knot and always use reverse knot so that your pedicle is very secured Now next pedicle is uterine artery. When you are clamping the uterine artery, include the anterior peritoneum in it. If you do not include it, small broad ligament vessels will retract and they will form a hematoma later on and your patient may require a later on resurgery. You can see the mouth of the uterine artery cut over here. Make the angle either with a knife or with a scissor. Transfix it using number 1 vicryl. first knot is always a double knot so that your pedicle is secured and always use reverse knots rather than using all granny knots you try and pedicle is not held so once i have ligated it we cut it uterus is delivered posteriorly and now i am on the upper pedicles which is ovarian tube and round ligament usually i take use two clamps but here the pedicle was small so that's why i'm using one clamp transfix is properly because you know ovarian vessel comes from the aorta so i always after i have transfixed it i take a second ligature to ligate this pedicle once again because in case the ovarian vessel slips and it bleeds hematoma may reach up to the kidney so it is always better to take a precaution and take a second knot on this pedicle this is the second suture and i'm just doubling like it doubly ligating it it takes little time but at least you are sure that you will not you will have a sleep not sleepless night and your patient is comfortable later on always take a reverse knot same thing is done after the uterines have been done on this side opposite side and i have clamped it in the two ped, uh, two clamps this pedicle because here it is little longish pedicle transfix it once it is transfixed take a second ligature just to be 100% sure that later on there will be no bleeding if you are in the correct plane and there's no problem in opening the both the peritoneum your uterus will be out in next in the first 10 minutes only now is the most important thing repair
once you have removed the uterus empty the bladder because by this time bladder would have filled up once again and if the bladder gets filled up peritoneum is pulled up if you want you do not want your patient to have a recurrence always pay attention to the anterocele repair i am doing a external caldoplasty so my suture goes through the vagina uterosacral and cardinal ligament the gap between the cardinal uh, uterosacral ligament and the peritoneum this always should be one bite should be taken here so as to prevent later on you know bleeding caldoplasty suture will prevent the recurrence of the enterocele fat belongs to the intestine so that's why we are below that so my I have now take a bite in the uterocecal of the opposite side and out from the vagina. I do not tie this suture, we just held it because if you tie it at this moment, cystocele repair will be difficult. After this, I close the peritoneum so that all my pedicles are exterior. In case of any bleeding, I do not have to open the peritoneum. And I also feel you know this gives a good buttress to the posterior surface of the bladder. So bite all around the peritoneum. Tie it. Put your finger when you are tying it so that you know nothing is included in this suture the upper pedicle also tied together now put water on the, this thing so that to delineate the cervi pubo cervical septum pubo cervical septum is a fibrous tissue vaginal wall is a reddish layer so when you put water you are able to identify white better the whatever tears you are identifying suture them with using number one zero vicryl this prevents the recurrence of the cystocele Make sure that you close all the tears in the pubo cervical septum. Once you have closed all these tears, you will realize your cystocele is reduced drastically. So all the tears in the pubo cervical septum is they are closed. So now I am uh, putting the visico vaginal, uh, closing the visico vaginal fascia, placating it. Fascia never degenerates; it just retracts. One has to have a correct technique to identify it. So keep on taking these sutures and held them. All these are tied later on because if you tie the first suture it will be difficult for you to take the suture below so in this suture i'm using uh, putting a suture on the pubo cervical septum so as to close the dead space and this is the last uh, suture over here now since bladder uh, uterus cervix is out bladder is hanging before you put the suture tie both the uterosacral ligament and I take bite on the posterior peritoneum over here so that you know bladder base, base is not hanging all these sutures are tight one after another redundant vagina is cut and vagina is closed with a continuous vicle 10 in a young sexually active woman it is better to close it with a far near near sutures I like to put spongostone in between this vaginal and bladder space because it will help us in small bleeders so after vertical closure of the upper vagina this is closed transversely once we have closed the vagina it is pushed up and the 
external caldoplasties which is a tight see the hold the vagina has gone now this is for the recto seal repair for the recto seal repair your ls has to be at the junction of the skin and the vagina one can see how nicely the uh, bladder has gone inside again the dissection is done between the rectum and the vagina and you have to identify the correct plane by sharp dissection i again don't use any vasopressin or any saline your upper extent will be till you meet the transverse part once you have cut the vagina by sharp dissection separate the vagina from the rectum same thing is done on the opposite side now catch hold of the liver and i muscle by creating a space over there it's glistening white tough structure take a good bite on both sides again sprinkle some water so that you can uh, recognize the donovillers fascia but before doing that repair take bite in both the levator and i so that you do your ls clamps are free take two bites now here i'm trying to identify the donovillers fascia and trying to uh, repair the torn edges donovillers fascia is a very tough fascia if you identify it correctly majority of cases your recto seal repair will not fail once you've closed the fascia again recto vaginal fascia on both sides is plicated redundant vagina is cut vagina is before suturing the vagina levator and i sutures are tight vagina is closed with a locking suture and this is the end result just two more sutures have to be put in the skin